and go. All right, this is going to be a light circuit, very simple light circuit, just one switch. It's got a power wire that comes in and then a power wire that goes back out to someplace else. Uh, so for this one, I've labeled the wire lights ahead of time. Now there's other ways that you can do this, especially since it's just a single switch. Uh, you know, there's only going to be one wire that actually goes to a switch and the other two are going to be power. So it's like we talked about before, you could mark the power wires also by cutting off the ends like this, which is pretty common. So when you come up to it, you don't even, you don't even need to, to know that this one's, uh, you don't have to label this in order to know it's a light switch because you know these two are power. And that's all that this one can be. So you want to separate this one. It's like we, we did with the line side of the GFI outlets for the kitchen, just so you know what it is. And all you need to do is separate that. That's going to be the power for it. So you can put that back up out of the way. Then remove the sheath from the two power wires. And the thing is, uh, whenever you're wiring a switch or anything that has a power going in and power going out to, to feed something else, um, it's kind of like with those outlets, um, it's the same deal except there's not an outlet connecting them. So since you don't have an outlet connecting the wires to make that junction, um, you just make the connection yourself by twisting it together. So normally an outlet would connect all these neutrals. But since there's no outlet here, you just go ahead and wire all the neutrals together yourself. That's why if you look at one of these, you, you generally just see that all these white wires are all tied together and no one really pays attention to them or knows where they go or what they do. And once again, like we did with the other grounds, you go ahead and twist all these together. It just prevents them from ever unraveling in any way down the line. And it makes it very, very neat. So you wire nut it off and you push it back inside the box where it's out of the way. Same thing with the grounds. There's gonna be a, a device in here. You need to have all the grounds tied together. And since there's going to be a device, you take one of the wires to make a pigtail. Now this pigtail wire off the ground, what it does is it actually attaches to the switch itself. Uh, for the GFI um, receptacles or any other receptacles for that matter, any kind of device that, that goes in one of these boxes that's, that's visible, you have to ground. Each one, if there's two switches, they will each need one of these ground wires pigtailed off of it. So once again, take that, push it back in there. Now these, these are the two power wires. So same deal, you want them pigtailed because they are going to actually power the switch. The power goes through these, continues on to where, wherever it goes elsewhere in the house, comes in, goes back out. And what you do is pigtail it so that one end of the power is available and attached to one end of the switch and the other end of the switch actually feeds the lights. So same as always, take that wire, push it up in there nice and neat and out of the way. And you have these three 
It's not important to annotate which one's the power in this case. You know, one of them's the power, and the other one is at the other end of the switch that goes to the lights. Twist them together so it's nice and neat, and push it to the wall. So in this case, we have a junction here. Power comes in, power goes back out. We took care of that by wire nutting everything together. And you have one end of that power feeding into this, this light. All the neutrals are tied together, uh, and you just have these, these three wires, two black wires and a ground wire. That is it.